discussed this, there's been significant opposition among Republicans to the Medicaid expansion, right? But over the past few weeks, Governor Nixon has put forth figures that show it might actually bring money into the state, not just federal money, but, uh, you know, be a net gain to the state. Is there any change of mind that may be occurring over the past few weeks here? Are the Republicans, <coughs> are you open to some sort of Medicaid expansion? I don't discount that you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in new federal money is not going to have some economic development. My objection has been the federal government's ability to meet their promise when they don't have a track record uh, that demonstrates to me that they can keep their promise. You know, they did address in some small way the fiscal cliff, leaving the difficult decisions of cutting federal government uh, to a time in the next month or two. They still have yet to pass a budget, uh, which they have not done for several years. They are borrowing over 40 cents for every dollar they spend. They have long-term budget difficulty that needs to be addressed. And they're telling us, under all of these circumstances that are taking place at the federal level, that they can support 100% of the Medicaid expansion and that we will only be obligated for 10% after that. And the rhetoric does not meet the reality in my perspective. So is it still highly unlikely that the legislature would approve that Medicaid expansion? I have not changed my position, nor have I spoken with members of the Republican Senate Caucus um, who have voiced any change in their position to date. Would you even say there's going to be a debate on this? Will this even come up on the floor? <clears throat> you know, if, if those concerns that I have can be addressed, you know, we do have a five-month process. If the federal government demonstrates that they can make some very difficult budget decisions, decisions, some responsible decisions that might give our members greater confidence, um, we may take another look at it. But I, I'm just telling you where things are today. So are you trying so, to have a net tax cut on the <coughs> Kansas competition uh, deal or revenue neutral shifting around the tax liabilities? Um, I've always talked about um, a desire to have a paid-for component of the income tax cut. And, and so my philosophy is not that we can dramatically cut income taxes and expect that the growth in the economy will be there to offset, that we've, we've got to be more thoughtful in, in how we craft this. So yeah. I, I support looking at these, some, of, some of these tax exemptions as a part of a greater tax policy discussion about yeah. how we're going to tax ourselves to pay for services. The last couple of years since a pretty strong position, no economic development package without significant constraints and tax credits. Is that going to be your position, or is the Senate taking a somewhat different position on that? What had been the gridlock between the House and Senate? You know, you don't have a deal in the Senate until you've all senators in on the deal. But what I have heard from senators is that the 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 where we had the condition that had to be met, that there were sunsets on the low-income housing and historic preservation tax credit programs, that among the members who are the most strident on tax credit reform, that that is no longer a requirement for them. And then in my talks with Speaker Jones, I've said, listen, we need to cut tax credit exposure by at least $100 million. David had a story. Uh, overall, so if, if new incentives are to be developed, then obviously those cuts on existing programs would have to go further. But uh, as I talk to members and talk to House leadership, uh, we need to move this forward. And I said, let's agree to a number and let's get to the number. David so that's what I'm asking Chairman uh, Schmidt and the members of this committee to do. David had a story the other day of looking at a number of states, especially Kansas, and some of the cutting that they've done in terms of tax income and how that's creating holes in their operations that they hadn't anticipated. 
why are you so focused on cutting income taxes and making sure that we compete with a state that may have dug themselves a hole that they didn't intend? And I have not, what I have clearly stated is we're not looking at the Kansas model. Okay, but we are competing with states that have no income tax. Income taxes are a variable. There are many reasons is that where businesses look at the business climate. They look at regulatory policies. They look at tax policy. Uh, they look at economic development incentives. Uh, they look at the difficulty on you know, local planning and zoning. There, there are a variety of factors, health care costs, legal planning, and tax policy is one of those areas that we need to address. And I'm not saying that we should adopt the Kansas model or that we should uh, adopt the, the fair tax model, but uh, we should recognize that people who uh, want to start a business and grow that business are looking at income taxes uh, as a part of that equation and that uh, we need to respond to that. Are you looking at a, a, a revenue neutral package that would involve replacing income tax, corporate tax, or something? Or are you looking at an actual yeah, I'm looking at, and I think originally uh, under uh, Governor Brownback's uh, model or his proposed legislation, he had encouraged certain exemptions to be uh, eliminated, and I think the extension of their sales tax to be included. And they ultimately, the legislature passed a measure that didn't include any of those kind of offsets. And so I'm talking about including uh, offsets in, in the income tax. Yes, that would be closer to revenue neutral. Senator, Senator Justice, what's Democrats' view on, uh, on tax policy? I mean, well, we obviously need to talk about tax policy. There's no question about that. We're going to have differences of, of opinion on what that means. Um, we also um, support the <coughs> Marketplace Fairness Act. Um, and those are things we're going to need to discuss. Whether or not we need to respond to Kansas, I think, is another issue altogether. On um, my side of the state right now, the general consensus is that Kansas has been incredibly reckless, not only in their incentives that they've offered, but also in their tax cuts. And the cost to attract new business to their state is going to end up being incredibly damaging. At least that's the consensus of the majority of the business folks that I speak to on the, on the Kansas City side of the, of the state. And so a lot of the things that we're talking about um, are things that don't necessarily have to do with tax policy or economic development incentives. Sure, that's a piece of it. But we also need to talk about things like workforce development. And Senator Dempsey talked a little bit about that looking at um, <coughs> vocational technical careers and that sort of thing. We also need to look at education. We have more people cross the state line road in the Kansas City area because of our education system than they do because of any sort of economic development and, um, incentives or tax cuts that are available. So we can't look at tax policy in a vacuum. We must look at it as a whole picture and it includes workforce development and it also includes education. How are, how are Democrats going to be significant to the chamber that doesn't really need you to pass a bill? I would disagree that they don't need us to pass a bill. I think that we've seen in the past, because there is an extremely conservative faction within the Republican Party, that many times in order to get some economic development bills and jobs bills moving forward, for instance, in the special session a few years back, it took all of our Democratic votes to get the Missouri Manufacturing Jobs Act across the finish line. I think we're incredibly relevant because of that, because we also um, want to create jobs and move Missouri forward. And so I think that you're going to see a close working relationship between the majority of the Senate, including the minority members. Senator Stempsey, can I ask you to 